Good morning. Good morning. A warm welcome to everyone in our Savior's name. God gathers us to receive renewal on this Reformation Day, marking the beginnings of the Lutheran movement through the gifts of the Word. And thank you to all who have helped get ready for this service, including the members of the band. Today is also a time of rejoicing as Madame Bershea firms her baptism in the rite of confirmation. And we thank her family for the flowers today, and I've promised her that when we're able to have fellowship again in person, she will get her special confirmation cake. So we welcome those watching this service on our YouTube channel. On Saturdays, we continue to email the worship and sermon files and post them on our website. Next Sunday, November 7th, is All Saints Day, when we remember those who have died in the past year. And please also remember to move your clocks back one hour before you go to sleep next Saturday night as we go back to Eastern Standard Time on Sunday morning. For those with newsletter articles, please have them into the office by tomorrow so that you can receive the November newsletter later this week. We're having another virtual fellowship session this afternoon at 1 p.m. And if you didn't receive the Zoom info, please contact me before 1. In October, we received food donations in the basket in the front hall for the Gathering Tables Food Bank. And thank you for these and also for your Thanksgiving Sunday gifts and for the fall gathering barbecue free will offerings, which will also go there. And in November, we'll be collecting for the current River Church's food cupboard. As you've likely heard, the province's new stages for the reopening plan began last Monday, and Council will be looking at the new regulations at its November 9th meeting. And then they will share a transition plan with you, which will come out uh, slowly but surely. Now we listen to our gathering song, and thank you to Arda for singing, Sole Deo Gloria, and it's verses 1 and 4 today of hymn numbers 878. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all of you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your work. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel, and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now listen to God's word, and the song that we'll sing between the lessons was also sung at Madeline's baptism. first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. A reading from Jeremiah. The renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know, to know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and needy. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will forgive iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now listen to the music for the hymn, You Are the Seed. from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. A reading from Romans. Paul's words stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human beings make themselves right with God through works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. 
Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift, through that, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith. He did this to show His righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that He Himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now prepare to hear the good news with the gospel acclamation on page four. Hallelujah. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. The holy gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who have believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Those who know me sometimes chuckle that when I'm trying to get a task done, I talk to inanimate objects as if they're real, to form a relationship, an understanding, or even to show them who is boss. Well, this happened again last week. In order to take some items to the landfill, I needed to remove the middle seats from our minivan. The first one came out easily. However, the second one put up a fight. Three of the four locks released when I pulled the handle. But the last one refused to get free. It clung on to the bar no matter which way I moved that seat. It was almost as though it was either playing a Halloween prank on me early or was trying with all its might to cling to its place. And finally, and I don't know how it happened, the seat finally sprung free, almost knocking me back. And relieved, but with a bruised ego and shoulder, I set down the chair on its grass for its brief fling of freedom from the car. And of course, when I went to put it back after the run, it refused to latch on. It was enjoying its freedom too much. And finally, after some finesse and a few pleas, it seemed to consent to settle in. It was no longer free in fact, but definitely in spirit. We'll be talking some more. <laughs> when well, our reading from John, Jesus talks about another type of freedom. This isn't freedom from something, but rather freedom to enter into a new form of relationship with God. 
It is a freedom from relying on one's present acts or one's past. Instead, living in the promises given through Jesus. Some years ago, it was freedom offered to Madeline at this baptismal font in the water and the word. This morning, it is a freedom of relationship, she affirms. And on this Reformation Day, the good news is that this freedom continues to be offered to all people. We receive the call to come into relationship with God and with each other. Creator speaks about this in our reading from Jeremiah. Although Jeremiah doesn't mention the word free, we can sense a vision of peace and harmony and of love received and shared. We hear about the covenant made with Moses the promise to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And even though the people broke this relationship time and time again, God chose to remain with them, guiding them, giving them a law, calling them to follow. And now we hear about God's continuing commitment to be with them. It will be on the basis of an even stronger covenant. No longer will they need to read the law or teach others about God. For everyone will know God's love and God's ways in their hearts. All sins, all past breaking of the covenant will be forgotten. This new relationship will bring bring together all the people of the promise from the least to the greatest. Unfortunately, Paul's letter to the Christians at Rome today reminds us that this covenant continues to be broken. Humans live so to insist on freedom from God and from each other, instead of on freedom to live in relationship. We focus on ourselves rather than on the needs of others. We continue both deliberately and in spite of ourselves to fall short of the glory of God. Life in this way forms an alternate reality to that often quoted passage from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. It is not patient. It is not kind. It is envious, boastful, arrogant, and rude. It is irritable and resentful. It rejoices in wrongdoing and doesn't rejoice in the truth. It refuses to bear all things, hope in anything, or endure anything. Paul points out that we continue to reject the invitation to live and to see in each other the image of God. But the good news, says the Apostle, is that God has not given up on the covenant to live in relationship with humankind. In the midst of what we could not or were not willing to do, through Jesus we have received the gifts of God's grace, forgiveness, and a renewed promise. Through God's Spirit, we have also received the gift of faith, a call to journey with God and with each other in newness of life. These promises were proclaimed at Madeline's baptism, and they continue to be offered to all in Jesus' name. Shortly, Madeline will affirm them, And all of us will receive the invitation to join her, saying yes as a renewal or for the first time to God's vision of freedom. The greeting to the one newly confirmed is one of rejoicing together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God 
and proclaim the good news to all the world. We will also ask God, both for Madeline and for us, for the continued gifts to be able to do this. One of the prayers requests the gift of the Holy Spirit, the confirmation of faith, guidance in life, empowerment in serving, and patience during suffering. This prayer concludes with the promise of eternal life. All that we do in life, even unto death, we can do trusting that God is with us. Even during those times when we seek another freedom, God keeps the covenant and calls us back, shows us our waiting place in the community of faith, and renews the promises of love, grace, and forgiveness. This is the promise given to us through Christ, now and forever. The confirmation verse Madeline has chosen is from the first chapter of Joshua. Moses has died, and his chosen successor Joshua is about to lead the people into the land promised them. The earlier covenant made with God, the covenant made with Moses, is affirmed. The journey through the wilderness has not always been based on faith and community working together. It is one reason why Moses dies before entering the land beyond the Jordan. Yet now Joshua and the people are called back into relationship with God and with each other. Into the life that is to unfold before them. We hear this in the verse chosen. The final words in this section of Creator to Joshua. Remember that I have commanded you to be determined and confident. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for I, the Lord your God, am with you wherever you go. Madeline, you are a child of God, formed in the image of God, called to live in relationship both with God and with each other. In Christ you've been washed in the grace of the Creator at this very font. You've been nourished in this whole community of faith through the Word. You have tasted grace around this communion rail. You have shared the good news through children's plays, Santa Lucia, and being a reader. Even the pandemic could not stop your desire to learn more, as you prodded your mom and me to continue your confirmation studies online. As part of those sessions, we talked together <clears throat> that confirmation, rather than being a graduation, is but one special stop on the journey of faith, of living in relationship with Christ and all of us. God's promises continue for you and for all people. Seek God out when that freedom seems lost or strained or difficult to find. Find God in this congregation and the other communities of faith to which you belong. Help us through your words and actions to feel God's love and to see God's visions. Challenge us when you see the freedom offered us through Christ broken because of sin. And at all times you have God's promise. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For I, the Lord your God, am with you wherever you go. Amen. Our hymn of the day, For Grace You Have Been Saved, number 598, comes from a Finnish opera on Martin Luther.
And I'll present Madeleine Marie Boucher, who desires to make public affirmation of her baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister who, who made your own by water and the word of baptism. You have called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask all of you, as you are able, to profess with Madeline your faith in Christ Jesus. Reject sin and confess the faith of the Church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life of the Lord. Madeline, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help me. People of God, do you promise to support this sister and pray for her in her new life in Christ? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Madeline the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice with this sister in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let us welcome our newest confirmed member of our Savior's around the world. Don't put out it in front of showed Madeline her the gift from the congregation of the cross with the Luther emblem on the, the one side and, and the Cairo on the other side of the cross. And may this always be a memento of your confirmation and a symbol of your faith. And for those of you many years ago, remember Joyce Arvelin? Many years ago she gave me a supply of confirmation gifts that will last, I don't know how long, <laughs> but I remember, remember Joyce's and her memory, and one of my favorite verses, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path, and you can use that in your Bible or another book, and then you also have an angel to be with you, and this is distributed. <laughs> and let's give her a, a round of applause again. As I 
I said, Madeline, we promise you a cake when we can do so. Okay? <laughs> now we continue with the prayers and our session. I'll go back to the, to the podium. But as you can see, we will be singing, um, singing the response. It's printed in the bulletin coming from Teze. And uh, you can again, you can sing it softly behind your mouth. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Guide Madeline as she affirms her baptism each day. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for your creation. For mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern, so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. healing in mind, body, or spirit. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, long-term care homes, and recovery organizations to be holy spaces of renewal, that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O oh God. who desire to be heard by you. These include Alan, Micah, Ray, and Eleanor, Elizabeth, Karen, Glenn, and Keith, Matthew, Carol, Paula, and Ron, Cindy, Judy, Tammy, and Carrie Lynn, Harvey, Art, Lillian, and Dory, Chris, Brian, Arden, and Grace, Eleanor, Audrey, Daniel, and Michael, Karen, Janice, Elf, and Donna. Renee, Lawrence, Rob, and Levi. Liam, Lisa, Nick, and Kathleen. Donna May, Nicole, Joan, and Tina. Elaine, Catherine, Susan, and Ron. Linda, Shelley, Rayland, and Nell. Taylor, Jeff, Barry, and Diane. Hear us, O oh God. Voices of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Thanks 
for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O oh God. our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ our truth and life Amen. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit let us pray as Jesus taught us our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And for gifts received and shared, let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it. Yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Strengthen us to be your body for the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive God's blessing. God bless you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Our song, Take My Life That I May Be, from the Red Book number 583, and we'll be singing stanzas one and four, and the, this is a familiar words, but to a new tune. Yeah, barely.